Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 35 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, Dave and I are talking about the industry body NASCOM believes that close to 40% of the information technology and outsourcing workforce in the country needs reskilling over the next five years to keep pace with newer technologies. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips for reskilling. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the training show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here. And this is kind of a great topic related to uh, how people are going to change their training approaches going forward. Yeah, absolutely. There really is that need to reskill, upskill, and, and make sure that people are, you know, aware of where their market's going. Absolutely. So, you know, really looking forward to this show. Yeah, so a great opening question for you, Dave, is how do you see the future of cloud computing training? Do you think it will be VR and AR related? Yeah, yeah, I do in certain aspects. I think we're, we're going to have a tendency to kind of take this technology to a ridiculous level. It doesn't really kind of make sense that people put on VR goggles to take a course on cloud computing unless there's some sort of physical thing that they need to touch and, and basically interact with. But, you know, in terms of uh, the AR-related stuff, the ability to do medical training, the ability to do um, mechanical training, the ability to do things like learning how to ride a motorcycle and learning how to drive, I think that's really going to set the world on fire because it would be great if you have cheat sheet, which is basically embedded into some sort of an Oculus class so you understand what's coming up in terms of what you're doing wrong and things like that, able to kind of change your behaviors. And then we could turn that off in some sort of graduated fashion over time, things like that. But that's going to be physical things that you do. So driving, you know, operating a machine, things like that. The VR stuff, I think people have a tendency to kind of over apply it uh, in the um, in the training space. And so in other words, it's perfectly fine for you to watch a 2D video and understand certain concepts, but in certain areas, it's gonna be more interesting for us to, you know, walk into a virtual room and, you know, look at the Amazon services that we're leveraging, reach up and grab them, you know, open up the uh, training video, you know, put it away, reach up and grab something else and open up the training video and put it away. So it's really not about, I think, increasing the content as much, but it's really about holding the interest of the people who are taking the training. And I, I do notice that uh, when I watch long videos, even my own videos, uh, the training videos, which may go a couple hours, you know, I end up tuning out after a while just because of the repetitive nature of the video itself. However, if I was interacting with the video, I was sitting with Oculus glasses, I was reaching out, opening doors and walking through things and taking a test of as I'm going and kind of having fun with it, very much like a video game, it's going to keep me more engaged. And when you keep yourself more engaged, you're going to be able to remember more. I find when I, you know, I taught college for 10 years and the students that learned the best were the ones that basically asked the questions, got up, written, talked, talked about things, things like that. And they weren't necessarily the brightest students in the world, but their engagement kind of um, lit up certain portions of their brain where they're able to retain the information better than the other students. And I think VR can kind of force that down to us as people who are understanding concepts. And also, it'll be fun to learn that way. It'll be great to interact with the various systems, things like that. I mean, it'd be, it'd be great if someone could take me into a cloud computing data center, you know, via VR, and I could touch things and open up things and open up drawers where you know, if you do that now, you're going to get tackled by the guards and you get tossed out, if not arrested. Um, so love to go into the do, do those sorts of things. What about a big data systems, augmented reality in terms of database systems? I mean, the sky's the limits. I, I think as long as we don't take this to a silly level, I think it'll be fine. But it's a good tool, in essence, to enable people to train better going forward. Yeah, I agree. There are so many ways, though, to obviously, you know, VR and, and AR can distract from the actual, the core training. But I think you're right. It would be great for people to feel they're on an experience while learning. So it's not just about the learning, you know, watching on a flat screen. You're actually immersed in a different environment, maybe, that's going to give you, you know, more focus, be more attentive. Uh, I mean, I, I often think about training and, and how, you know, virtual reality, augmented reality will work with that. Uh, and one of the things that I often think about is 
being able to put on some form of VR headset, go walk into an auditorium for a, a seminar or something where it's kind of interactive through the, the glasses. And then after the, the hour long seminar, the hour long training where you are actually engaged within video, et cetera, et cetera. So whereas the presenter would normally show something on a screen uh, and you would watch it, you're actually, that becomes part of your whole experience. Um, and then you're back in the room again. And then you've actually got a virtual breakout room. So after the seminar, you've got a chance to get out of the seminar with the, with the fellow people that have been in the real time seminar. And you actually get a chance to talk, have a coffee in a, in a virtual kind of way to just to cement the ideas of the, of the context of the, of the, the, the virtual experience, as it were. So I, speak, I guess it's more of a real time experience I'm talking about, not a, you know, a, a pre-programmed thing, but um, with regards to, you know, you just turn up, log on and, you know, it's your own automation thing. I'm, I'm more sort of logging on in a real time kind of uh, environment thing, but I'm sure it's out there, but I always think I, I don't do this sort of stuff when it comes to, to training. So it's one of these things that, you know, I think it would be quite cool to be able to do that. What are your thoughts? I think it'd be great. I mean, I'm kind of sick on hopping on airplanes to go, you know, do an hour speech and listen to seminars. And you can watch a lot of it online, but it's not as good as being there and interacting with people and asking questions and going to booth to booth, things like that. There's been efforts, I think, to start a lot of these virtual uh, conferences up. They weren't VR related. They were just kind of virtual in nature. And I think that, um, you know, we're, we're kind of heading to a point where that seems to be the way things should go. There's really not going to be a lot of difference between me sitting in a auditorium and listening to a keynote speech, you know, like I did at Google Next a couple of weeks ago, versus me watching it in HD or even watching it through VR goggles, where I'm able to turn around, look, it's very tactile, and I'm able to pause it and, you know, uh, ask some questions or touch on certain slides and have different information and drill down to different information. And therefore, it's going to be a richer experience for me. I'm not going to sit there and have to learn at the pace of the person who's talking. I'm going to be able to learn at my pace and be able to click on things and learn things in a much more deeper level. And I think that that's, you know, where we're headed going forward. And I think it's great. I mean, I, I would like nothing more than to stay off of airplanes. I think they're evil. Um, you know, going forward, our travel is just, just a, a waste of time. Um, but I'm going to travel. It's basically the price I pay to go learn things and go interact with people or teach people things. And why can't I do it remotely? And why can't we be genius at doing that? And why can't that experience be, be, be better than we have today? And I, I think those questions are, it can. And let's go ahead and make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. As you say, you know, time is money and traveling is just so, you know, so time intensive. It's just ridiculous. I mean, from a recruitment point of view, I'd love to be able to utilize VR uh, and have, uh, you know, a, an environment where, you know, we can run networking events where, you know, everyone that's coming to the table is already pre, you know, pre prepared for questions or an idea of where they're at, what they're doing. And we get a sense of, you know, a, a more sort of an experience as opposed to a telephone call or a Skype call. You know, they're great. But, you know, I think a VR experience would give another angle to that. Uh, and, and, you know, in 10 years time, we're probably thinking, what do you mean you just used a telephone and a, and a camera to do it? Where, where were you? Where was your, you know, augmented glasses or your headset to do the, you know, to do the interviews? <laughs> we're before our time. <laughs> Yeah, and, and also travel and uh, ability to keep people off the highways and be more energy, energy efficient and things like that. I mean, that's kind of the end state of where we're looking to go. And I think we have the technology now. It's a matter of having the courage to go ahead and implement it. And, and, and there's new startups that are moving in this direction. The training companies here, Simply Learn is the one we're talking about now that's out of India. You know, they're moving in this direction. And I think that uh, that's where, where, where things are going to head. And we're going to, in essence, abstract ourselves away from reality, but by extracting ourselves away from reality, we'll be able to participate in reality much more than we are today. And I think that's the idea behind it. And I just can't wait to live in a world like that. Yeah, that is the irony. That is the irony is that we're, we're pulling ourselves into a virtual reality to connect with reality in a better way. <laughs> you know, certainly on a, certainly on a business level and, and things like that and a training point of view, there's definitely huge scope there. So it's exciting times. And it leads us on nicely to your top three uh, tips for reskilling, Dave. If you'd like to share those with us, that'd be great. Yeah, first, and we kind of already alluded to this, training first, AI second. I mean, we have a tendency to force fit technology in any sort of way that we... Uh, think we should force fit technology. And the reality is that we need to focus on quality content, the ability to kind of have people understand the quality content, and then ways in which we deliver it in that are unique and innovative we can really kind of play a role at that point. So 
think about the message you're delivering, the context, the content you're delivering, and then figure out the delivery mechanism. Don't get you know lost in the fact that this is AI or augmented reality, or um, or uh, excuse me, virtual reality or augmented reality, uh, and deliver everything through um, you know, through you know this kind of technology. We need to think about maintaining the content, maintaining the structure of it, and make sure it's very, very deep and very meaningful for the people who are taking it. Try not to overcomplicate things. It should be simple. Uh, I always use the term "keep simple things simple" with my people, and and I, I can't stress that enough. I mean, why overcomplicate something that doesn't have to be overcomplicated? And so, leveraging virtual reality and augmented reality as a way to deliver training should be something that makes things easy, easier for people. And if it doesn't, we're in essence failing at doing that. And I suspect that the first few generations of this technology won't be easier, and we'll probably have to go through this complexity cycle before things get easier. But you know, out of the gate, you know, this should be something that's more turnkey, very innovative, and very thoughtful in terms of how we think of delivering this technology. I suspect we're gonna have some knocks out of the park. We're gonna have some really ex great experiences based on all the gaming that's going on, and you know, all of the work in this area, and people understanding human factors, it's really gonna basically take things to the next level. And then finally, continuously improve. Um, so this should be something that immediately, as soon as we deliver this technology, we're, we're just satisfied with it and we're remaking it and remaking it and remaking it. And we're never satisfied with the capabilities of it going forward. And unless you're able to do that and basically get into that mindset, we're not gonna be able to deliver the quality training using the mechanism we're looking to, basically looking to enable. And I think that uh, a lot of training companies have a tendency to you know, make this fall by the wayside. They should continuously improve their content, always update things, things like that. Just kind of think about this stuff as something that's living, breathing, and something that should be maintained and loved over time. They're great three tips there, Dave. Really great three tips. And it's, your last tip, actually, uh, with regards to the, the machine learning, the artificial intelligence side to it, you know, I'd just like to add, I mean, it would be in an ideal world, it would work great for the content to make sure that the content is, you know, um, focused around the individual. And I think if you're putting the context of training into a virtual or augmented reality, you know, there's, a, there's lots of ways of measuring the engagement measuring exactly how people are training, studying their learning curves. And then if you're looking at, at, at building um, uh, some machine learning into the back of that, where you can actually, you know, the training can be tailored more and more and more in an automated way for that particular user's experience. So I think there's really something there that's going to, you know, really uh, act as a huge catalyst. And like you say, it'll, it'll be a while for generations to embrace what's going to happen. But, you know, in effect, when it does, the catalyst for training and learning, you know, people will put their, like you say, their Oculus on or whatever VR headset they've got and they're training, they know the training is going to be tailor-made to their learning because it's already been pre-programmed to understand how they work in a virtual environment, you know. Yeah, I think we're going to see lots of things like that. Probably an avatar of your mom popping up and yelling at you because you missed a question on the exam, things like that. We're going to have lots of fun things. Your dinner's getting cold. Come on, come downstairs now. <laughs> Well, look, Dave, thanks for being a part of the training show this week. Always a pleasure. I know I've probably uh, waffled on a bit, but thanks for your patience. No, my pleasure. I think it was a great topic, great show. Thank you very much for inviting me. Always a pleasure, sir. Always a pleasure. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's training show. If you've got any comments or thoughts, you can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. Again, thanks again, and till next week.